Hello. Jade. What's God, going it's on, bro? It's been like forever. I, I We're going to get into how forever it's been. But I just yeah. wanted to say thank you um, for joining this segment. It's called Give Them Their Flowers, which ultimately is about bringing super influential, super inspirational creators to the forefront to talk about the history of dance and the current work that they've been making and kind of the future developments of what they've got going on, but also giving them the platform to, you know, give flowers to other people. Cause as we know, it takes a village. It's, you know, we don't it do it on our own. So um, yeah, it's just a really open discussion to talk about. And I, you're, you're incredible. But for those at home that might be watching that might not know who you are, Please let them know your name and what it is that you do. Yeah, uh, well, my name is easy. My name's Philip Shabib. Uh, my what I do is a <laughs> bit more complicated uh, to explain because I think it changes every five years. But I think the the easiest way to explain it is I, I design movement and right. um, what that looks like. I think changes with uh, the phases of my life. But as of right now, I think. Um, what I'm most, I guess, recognized for right now is uh, the connections of the bodies of partner work and things like that. That seems to be kind of the, the mainstay of, of my career at the moment. Um, so yeah, so that's that's what I do. Absolute Connect bodies and limbs. Brain busters. It's not just, it's like, when I watch it, I'm like, what the hell is he doing? How did he get his leg from here to <laughs> It is, it's incredible watching it, but we're going to get you. into that, especially when you talk about designing movement, because I think that's a really mm -hmm. interesting phrase, but we're going to pick at all of that. But before we do, I'd love to play a game. Is that right? Yeah, I love games. Let's do it. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So quick fire round questions. Don't think all about right. it too much. Just off the top of your head, whatever comes to mind. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah, I'll try. Yeah. I'm the worst at this, but I will try. I overthink everything. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for go it. Go for it, it, man. Steamroll forward. Okay. So uh -huh. the first question is, what is your earliest dance memory? All right. Earliest dance memory. I always I always go back to this. There is this abandoned mall that um, I had a friend or two, and we would go there. We would set up a radio, and we would freestyle there. And it, actually, you know what? I got what, I, I got what even earlier than that. Um, there's a memory where I was in my room and I was, there was a, there was a program called Kazaa, which most people probably have no idea what it was, but it was a downloading software. And I saw for the first time somebody doing this at a rave and I was like 16 or 15. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever done ever. Uh, little did I know. Uh, yeah, it was just this. <laughs> so I spent, I spent way too many hours doing that in front of the mirror, thinking that was going to impress all the girls in my class. It didn't have that effect at all on any of them. And actually, at one point, I think the mirror I was looking at fell down on me, almost as like a sign to just <laughs> leave that move alone. Um, that actually might be the first real dance memory that's I have. Good so one. We'll, we'll that's go a, with that one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm just imagining you in the mirror like this. Yeah, just okay. over and over. Just, uh, yeah, yeah. You got to start somewhere. Oh, God. Okay. Keep going. What is your favorite song to get down to at the moment? The most recent one. Oh, um, I can give you artists. Song is always rough. I can tell you, like, really okay. quickfire artists that I'm into. Uh, Jacob Banks. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, it's more sad stuff. I'm into crying lately. That's just where I'm at. <laughs> That's uh, fine. So so Jacob Banks, J.P. Sachs. Um, although there is some, like, um, like F. Uh, oh, yeah, J. Maybe Masego. Yeah. That type of vibe. Right. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at lately. Are we in Masego? Like his upbeat stuff, or oh, oh yeah. probably, probably, probably more the like the moody stuff, but it has enough musicality to play with. To play with, okay. That, that's 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 where I've been at lately, but it's okay. uh, it, it's always changing. That's cool. That's cool. All right. Mm -hmm. Other than you, obviously, who is the mm -hmm. best dancer in your family? Oh. Uh, honestly, I'll give it to my mom. My mom used to be a, a uh, Croatian folk dancer. That's actually what she did. Aside from going to college, that was like her main other gig. So mm. she used to do that. And she even did that when she moved to the States. She found like a Croatian folk dancing group that she was a part of. I think 
all the way up until she started having kids. So she was the only one that was even remotely close to dancing in my family. So uh, Croatian. Yes. yes. Okay. We're going to like pin that. Going to come back to that at some point Absolutely. later on. All right, cool. So what was the best dance advice you've ever received and from whom? Oh, I've got, I got, I got some good ones. Um, I can give you, I'm going to quick, quick fire some of the ones that really stuck with me. One of the first ones when I was super young, uh, when I was battling, they always said dance to be remembered, not to win. Uh, that, that it was better to have the battle that everyone remembered and loved watching than to be mm-hmm. the one that won the championship. Mm-hmm. That was huge. Uh, cause I think that shifted some things. He, I had he said that to you. Do you remember? Uh, uh, honestly, his name was Mr. Green. He, he's, he was a, a, a local dancer in Houston. Um, and I, I don't think um, like international audiences may not know him, but at the time he was uh, really influential and one of the main people that I would um, practice with when I was younger. Uh, and, and yeah, he just, he just dropped that advice, but you know, you never know where the, that wisdom is going to come from. Yeah. Um, and, and there was a lot of things like that. Another one is that don't believe, um, don't believe people who call you a genius. And that was another one of the, the best advices I ever get. Because if you, if you believe, um fans of your work when they call you a genius and you also have to believe them when they say you're terrible and then you're just at the whim of everyone's opinion of you so it's better to not believe them when they praise you uh than to have to believe them all the time and uh that was intense it it was good though it was actually it was helpful for me because i think when you're trying to be creative you have a natural effect on people that makes people feel it is natural. They, 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 it's brand new. So for them, they want to give flowers exactly like you said. Mm. And, um, sometimes those flowers are, uh, depending on how you process it Mm. can be either damaging or uplifting. And it's really up to you to decide. So I think once I kind of understood to understand it from the perspective of the audience, not as in like, I'm going to take everything for face value. Okay. You say I'm a genius. I'm a genius. Now everything I put out has to be genius on that level, you know, on that level. And and, and I think that, that will, that eventually, like, I think over time, now these are different phases in my career that I got these advice, but I think, but I think it's interesting that like at different phases, you almost need different advice to, to kind of like calibrate and regulate yourself. So that way you can still be a grounded artist. Um, but yeah, those are the first two that came to mind. The other one was, was honestly, I was in a club in New York and it was Archie Ninja who gave it to me. And, and he's, um, one of the original, uh, house of house of Ninja in New York. And he just told me to stop caring so much. And that was one of the, <laughs> stop caring about what other people think, which seems like such a, it's a stereotypical thing, but I think in dance, I didn't really understand it until I was in a club in New York and I saw people rolling around on the ground, having a good time and not worrying at all about whether they were impressing anybody. All that really mattered was like, was their soul speaking in that moment? Yeah. And that was another, it was huge for me because I'm an overthinker naturally. Mm-hmm. So um, slowly getting to see it, I would say maybe the movement was the advice even more than the words, just seeing it happen. But anyways, so th- these are things that are coming off the top of my mind. Hopefully that's that kind of answers that's the And it's all really, really great, but we're going to come back as well to the whole concept of opinions and, what yeah yeah like that in dance but yeah that's a little nugget that we're gonna go okay keep going what was the last dance spectacle that you saw that kind of left you in awe Ooh, oh man okay um interestingly enough it's it was uh it was on video even though okay so there's a there's a company called netherlands dance theater mm-hmm. and they're incredible yeah uh, from the netherlands and yeah. um they uh, most people aren't lucky enough to get to go see them live because they rarely perform and at least in the, in the states we we don't get to see it very much mm-hmm. i was very strangely out of the blue even though i i have never choreographed a ballet ever was invited to do a small piece for their um second company and it was a cool experiment they've never done it they never they never thought of bringing a hip hop or like a street dance choreographer in for them mm-hmm. and they did it and while i was there i was able to uh, they have an archive of all their past shows. And I was lucky enough to watch a couple of them. Uh, one of them particularly by Crystal Pipe. Um, mm-hmm. I think it was called, uh, it was a, it was a table and there's just four yes. dancers around a table and, talking, and it's just it? talking. Yes. Insane though. I Insane. was Insane. blown away. I was like, okay. All right. And, and yeah. honestly, and I always knew there's, there's, there's beautiful art everywhere. There really is. If you look around, it's there, but 
getting to be in the space and see the, the obviously the ability of the dancers, but then also getting to see the finished works of art that they've they've produced. It's very clear that a lot of the world doesn't get access to some of the best things that exist. Yeah. Um, and then the things that are are, are not, I won't I won't say some subpar, but maybe less complete or incomplete are shoved in everyone's face, right? Yeah. So the things that are just like it, they're everywhere. Yes. So um, getting to see the highest caliber of things, I think, has been a huge privilege of of getting to travel and 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 be with different people. So that I think was the I don't know if it was the, the last thing because I mean I mean there's a lot of really beautiful. Um, if I think dance wise, I think that one hit me really, really hard. Yeah, yeah. I know exactly yeah. the one that you're talking about because it it, yeah. came, it blew me. So special. Yes, yeah. for that. Okay, cool. Let's keep going. Some okay. something. Hold on, make sure I've got it. Yeah, something that was difficult for you to learn. I'm really interested to hear this because I want to. So uh, the which which one was difficult? Just something. So it could either be oh oh oh, oh something something, lesson, something that was difficult. It could be a move. Oh yes, I mean oh geez, so many things. Um, gosh, I my, my I'm trying to think. It dance specifically, right? Not yeah. life. Yeah. Okay, let me see. Let's, let's go dance uh, then. Yeah, dance might help narrow it down. Um, something difficult to learn. Um, I mean, geez, I feel like everything was, but. <laughs> I'll tell you the things I'm bad at naturally that require extra, extra effort. effort on my yeah. So like I I don't naturally groove well. So that's like a a, a thing that like if I, I if you turn on music I will probably make up some groove out of some vocabulary that will not look like party dancing. The whole concept of it is supposed to join in with other people, right? Right, right, right. But right. I've made my whole career about looking different than other people. Right. So right. that tends to seep into when I'm trying to dance with people. <laughs> so so that's, that's the biggest, the hardest thing is that when you just want to groove and party and then you end up being the only one who looks completely different than everyone else. Right. That, that was something I had to, especially being in the industry too, because occasionally you do get industry jobs where you have to be just one of the many people on stage. You, yeah. you got to figure it out. That yeah. I think was the harder mental transition to like, all right, how do you look like everyone else when you spend your whole life trying to look different? Right. Um, so I, I'm constantly battling that kind of like shape shifting contradiction. Yeah. Um, so I would say like grooves and really any popular dance, I'm like the last to get it. That's that's so my thing. That the entire TikTok discography is. Yeah. If if you had me do any TikTok dance, it will not look good. And, and, and maybe that's my lack of prioritizing, but. Also, I think I would just learn it slower than every other person. That's just right, not right, my right. forte. It's not your hundred percent. I'm, I'm yeah. with you on that. I think I'm gonna have to jump yeah, in. Yeah, I, I fell off that bandwagon pretty hard. That's why I was like, yeah. oh, okay, I'll leave it to the I'll yeah. TikTok professionals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. All right. So, uh, two more. What would you tell okay. your younger self? Oh, younger self. Oh man. I kind of like that my younger self was a little ignorant of things because it made the world small for him. Okay. And he actually thought everything he was doing was really important. Like I would go back and be like, Hey, don't worry. The world's way bigger than that. So you don't have to get hung up. But then part of me thinks maybe getting hung up in that moment was what allowed him to take it seriously enough to expand. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I almost, I almost just wouldn't say anything. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let my younger self be make it, make his mistakes and, um, and then What's just get to where he needs to get. And I yeah. love how you're talking about him in like a third abstract person. Like, uh, it's oh like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a I mean I'm a different person tomorrow too. So I'm yeah, whoever that was a long time ago. Poetry click. Okay, last one. Oh, this was a good one. What was the okay. moment that you fell in love with what it is that you do? Yeah, that's a hard one. Oh yeah, I, I think I have. Uh, it is it is it is a hard one because I think there is uh, different types of love that happen right. across the spectrum. Right. So I think um, I didn't have a voice. I feel like as a child, I kind of did everything looking for a voice. Right. Like I didn't I never felt like I truly understood what I was on Earth to do. And there was nothing there was no feedback in my world from school or anything that said, oh, you're good at this in a way that is special. Dance provided that 100%. When I first started experimenting with dance and realized there was opportunity there to 
break the rules in ways that no one else had. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't do that with sports. You know, you can't like throw the ball in a weird way in baseball. Yeah, yeah, you have yeah. to throw it technically the hey, way that works. Yeah. 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 And uh, dance really provided a voice. I mean, it, it's a language in a way that I didn't really understand at the time when I was doing it, but it, it was it was a way to feel seen when you otherwise felt like you're just middle of the road in all right. categories. And then suddenly there was like a voice of your own. So even though I wasn't great at it, the idea that I could make a move no one's done, I didn't even care if I won the battle. It was like, but look, I made this thing. Yeah, yeah. And you suddenly, you suddenly feel like you exist. And I think that was probably the love of creativity, I think, was born there. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, then you have the love of music, which shows up, like, as you go through different things in your life, you realize music is, like, cathartic and, and rescuing you from the depths of your sadness. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, uh, so, so there, there, there's there's definitely different loves, and I'm sure you've experienced all these different yeah. loves along the way. Yeah. Um, but that, I think, was the first one. Is like, as a child, feeling like you're you exist in the world as an entity, there's just something powerful about that moment. That's dope, bro. That's dope. Thank you so much for that little game. Of course. Everyone in here is happy. <laughs> yeah, the the, the crowd goes wild. Clapping. Da, da, da. <laughs> End of game show music. So nice. I want to kind of then delve a little bit deeper then into the, the history of you because mm. I, I know you from a certain point onwards, I guess, mm -hmm. and maybe what you don't know, a little bit of your work previous to that we we all you know pac-man is the, the way in which us over here in the uk the hip-hop the original yeah, yeah. yeah the new you and oh, have you seen pac-man stuff this is when like youtube kind of was just first hitting and we had access to other people abroad but oh. i think it's something that i would love to talk even further back than that um mm -hmm. if you had to break down your career yeah like, a real short, sharp five bracket thing. How would you do that from like beginning when you first started to where you are in Shanghai right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. Uh, okay, so I'll I'll try to break it down both in in career steps, like how I how I got out there, and then I'll also break it down into what I was doing privately at that time, so that way it kind of matches up um, depending on what what. I guess the audience is looking for it. But I think for the first, the first phase was definitely an experimentative phase, like an experimentation phase. Mm. It, it seemed as though I just wanted to play with movement and just see what I was capable of. It was mostly exploratory. I, I, I don't think I had any major goals at that time. Mm. I, um, it was kind of around the time where I was really, it was all freestyle. It was all underground battle culture. It was, Try to make something in your room that looked interesting. Test it out in the world. See how where, it goes. It where in big... America are you from? So, I, oh, so I grew up in Houston, Texas. Okay. And in Houston, I was I was very fortunate actually that at that time it was kind of a really great time for freestyle dance. There was mm. uh, Youth Advocates, which is a YA, which was like a b boy uh, group, and then there was also um, a couple popping crews that were there as well. And somehow there was like a major event called B-Boy Hoedown. There was, for some reason, it was it was a hotbed of dancing for freestyle culture for freestyle. only, not for choreography or anything. Right, right. So right. I, I got swept up into it, and it, it just became a great way. You know, anyone could enter a battle, and that was just it was interesting. There was no gateway you had to cross. Obviously, you had to maybe do, um, you know, the uh, you have to you might get eliminated at the beginning or something. But like yeah. as a kid, there was an open door and ranks that you could just individually work on. I could go alone after school. I could focus on experimenting and then I could go test it out. And that's what I, I think that whole battle culture phase of my life was a lot of exploration. And that was in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and then uh, that's, that's pretty, pretty much what it was. It was school dances, battles, and a lot of experimenting. So that was the first phase. I think second was when videos started to yeah, become a tool. So the second phase for me is I realized I started finding that there was four, there was online platforms to uh, get educated by really actually really well known freestylers around the world, and there was something called the Wiggles Forum, um, which I don't know if anyone uses now, but at the time it was the only thing that poppers would use, and they would have little contests on there. They would have OGs basically critique your videos. 
Fixed. So that's when I started like, all right, I'm going to make a bunch of freestyle videos and uh, I'm going to post them on this forum and get some feedback from, from these, you know, legendary dancers. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's huge. Like for me, it was mind blowing because, you know, I, I grew up just watching old videos of like Aki from Japan Who's, by the way, here, right? Uh, it's a long story. It's going to come full circle in a second. It's we're we're going to talk about that, yeah. We're, we're going to get there. But, yeah, so so that was basically the second phase, was really introducing video as a, as a tool to get feedback directly. And I and I think some people use it uh, for a number of other ways, but at the time, it really wasn't about exposure. Mm-hmm. It was really just like, because you didn't get enough people watching your video for exposure, but you did get enough people in the community watching to give you some help. Right. So that's what it was for me. It was like a way to really like improve quickly from my bedroom, basically, wicked, wicked. Uh, which was cool. And, and that time period was really dope. And then third was the big exposure phase, which is basically, so you think you can dance. I was like, let's go on a win. Let's, let's, mm-hmm. let's see if I can get as many people to see this thing that I tested and experimented on uh, in front of people. And I had no idea what I was doing, but I just showed up in Chicago um, I flew to Chicago, went to an audition, turned out they, they aired the audition uh, of me doing just this one wave that had been particularly successful in battles. And yeah, and it, it seemed it seemed to get people's attention. I didn't I didn't go very far that year. I got I got cut doing the samba, which is no surprise. Um, and and then I went back home and then I tried again multiple years until finally I made it the third time I auditioned uh, to the top twenty. And um, that phase was the most excruciating but probably the most important phase of me actually understanding how to make it a career later um because now it wasn't just me in my room now i had to think about an entire audience of people right. and people who didn't know dance i also had to be willing to be vulnerable and look terrible at a certain style of dance even though um that wasn't what i came on there to showcase yeah you know yeah. there's a lot of like little ego deaths that have to happen uh, for you to survive that process. And I was, yeah, I was battered emotionally from that whole thing. Uh, but it taught me how the business works, how TV works, how audiences function, also how fans work. I had never had a fan in my life. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I walk out from the first tour day and there's there's people yelling and they've never met me and they don't know me at all. And there's just some sort of like weird disconnect between what I think I've just done, I just wiggled my arms on stage and there's people yelling about it. It, it That yeah, yeah, registry yeah. takes time to process. So that was the, the third phase was trying to get used to that. Um, is this kind of in the realm? Yeah, of where, where yeah perfect, okay. perfect. Let's keep going for number four. Okay, number four was more of like a leadership phase for me because I had to, uh, essentially what I wanted to is I, I rounded up some people that I was close with that were talented and mm-hmm. we created IME Crew. Um, which which ended up being a huge step for me because it was basically me integrating what I've learned across the years into a group now. And so it's no longer about me. It's about like, all right, how do I... And this, I think, was the beginning of Connection Choreography, which ended up being kind of the rest of my career leading up to it, which was, you know, how do you unite people who look different, they're different shapes, sizes, uh, yeah. cultures, everything, and how do you make them work together in a way that's beautiful? And, and that's really what I and me ended up standing for. Uh, on the show, which is essentially that. So, so yeah, that's the that was the fourth phase, and I learned a lot. The leadership, the reason I call it lead, leadership phase, was just because it was incredibly difficult to know how to lead people's lives. I mean, some of them quit school. Yaya, yeah. who's doing amazing now, she came from Czech Republic, had no idea what she was doing, didn't know the language, and I invited her on a whim, and I had to be responsible for where she ended up, and yeah. that feeling that just had never happened to me, where I had to. I had to really worry about where someone was going to end up in life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so there was that, and then, and then, yeah, the last phase, of which I think is the phase I'm in now, and, and I, it's a, it's, it's awesome, it's beautiful, is uh, what, I guess the the artistry phase, which is really re- what I'm doing now, is just trying to adapt what I've learned my whole life to movement design, which kind of goes into the thing that we were talking about, which is yeah. like, how do I, um, I guess, manipulate every facet of an experience for an audience. You know, from the sound to the color, mm. uh, that's why it kind of bridges into directing too, because you're working on camera angles, you're working on Good. everything. Ends up adding to the experience of your audience, not just your movement. And I think as you start to get further along in this business, you start realizing that all of those factors have to be played with to successfully transmit an idea. And I think that's where I'm at now, where I'm uh, I'm studying more psychology to understand how people think, to understand what people need. 
uh, like what, what, what feelings are they looking for from their art? So it's not only about me, but it's like, all right, like what, what do people need in their life right now? And then what's the best way to actually translate, uh, information to them. So, so yeah, so that's, that's where I'm at now. And that's honestly what brought me here. I'm working on a television show here in China right. and uh, yeah. That's a perfect segue because that's what I wanted to talk to you about, about your current work and where your future going. So you're in Shanghai at the moment. What time is it then? Mm -hmm. Roughly. Uh, it's about five thirty. All right. Well, it's about yeah, it's about ten thirty here. So, what you're working on a television show over there? What is what is that encompassing? What's the television show about? And then, what kind of future work have you got going on after this? If you can yeah. tell us. Yeah, of course, of course. No, it, it it's actually my life now more than ever has been really strange in the sense that my work will range. And maybe it's because I've done things in the underground and I've done things above ground, I guess, um, is that right now this is like a, a, a commercial dance show, something like So You Think You Can Dance and ABDC mm -hmm. put together. It's called Street Dance of China. And uh, I'm basically a uh, supervising choreographer on the job. So essentially all of the contestants, uh, if they ever, it, like there's going to be a lot of situations where they have challenges and they're struggling and they basically need Report. people to come in and give them ideas. I, I basically just play the idea guy um, and that's what I'm doing here and, and it's great and it's and it's fun and it's, it's it's nice because basically it's bringing dance especially it's actually underground dance culture um, it's it's a show like nothing else that they have because there's actual battles in the show there's things that don't exist in the states that should um, right. so basically China's getting really like authentic underground dancers I mean you're getting some of the best of the best from around the world competing uh, we have people from France here, from Japan, um, from uh, Egypt, from yeah. Vietnam. A lot of like, so it's everyone. Everyone got invited here for the show. It's it's massive. Um, so I love this stuff because this brings um, a mainstream spin to the things that like a lot of us have been privileged to see in our local communities. You know the battles and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but I also like always after this job particularly, I'll go to something completely opposite, like NDT, where I'll go to just hyper focus on uh, on a piece of art that is just for lovers of art yeah um and i bounce around back and forth so there's not really like a streamlined way that choreography has taken me in a direction it's mostly that i keep myself open to a balance uh yeah. of everything and obviously like you know you also have to think monetarily right? some jobs are for money some jobs are for experience okay. some jobs are for artistic yeah. satisfaction yeah, yeah. So I balance between those. Um, but I'd say on a personal level, where, where a lot of my love is going privately, like where I think my life might go more privately, is towards um, psychology, which it, it seems strange in, in relation to art, but actually it's the psychology of art in general has been a really fascinating subject. Yeah. Why, why humans uh, even engage in this activity at all and yeah, yeah, what purpose yeah. does it serve to us neurologically biologically that we're mm. we're predisposed to create things in the world rather than just use them as they are and mm -hmm. uh, it's just a fascinating topic so that's kind of my closeted um kind yes. of my my thing that i do when the, when everything's off and i'm alone i'm reading books <laughs> on that and that's what i love that's dope bro that is dope like the site okay there's i need a minute to think absorb all of that information but yeah so I, I gave you a lot too that's kind of it's awesome experience. it's that's awesome kind of how I feel right now. it's awesome but definitely i think that there's things that you're you're on to and you're thinking about that is i think the next evolutionary stage of where we can take our art and if we start changing our mindset and thinking in a different way then we can create completely new things because we're changing that oh yeah, yeah. Issue that's happening so yeah man so I, I mean, I think that even uh, when you look at the the younger generation, I mean, you have uh, you, uh, you have a natural hesitancy of the older generation to embrace video based dancing, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's I think they're they're right to be hesitant in the sense that a lot of the social aspects of dancing are falling away, and I think though yeah. that loss is real. Yeah. Um, but then there's also a fascinating, you know, if, if if your heart isn't tainted too much by your own experience. There is a fascinating boom of creativity that's showing up in a social space that I also think is fascinating. It just, I'm sorry, in the digital social space. Right. Um, 
and, and I think what I, I try to keep myself tempered because as I get older, the natural tendency is to be like, oh, it's not like it was back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm trying <laughs> to make sure I don't become that OG when I get older because I think that OG never really embraced me when I was younger. Right. And right. I want to be able to like, you know, these kids aren't doing this because they're lazy. They're doing it because there right. is a new there's a new set of values that are building up in that community and they're just trying to survive as best they can. 100. And they're trying to, to, to be accepted by their peers. So yep. uh, I think we can do more good as an older generation adding rather than trying to take yep. away what they are building. Um, so that's, that's my, my thought process is really trying to embrace whatever's happening right now and see if maybe we can just steer it rather than try to like bash it. Bash you know? it. Yeah. 100%. Yep. And, and on the topic of like, building and and us growing and helping each other i think that's the kind of segue into the actual giving them the flowers section the flowers. For you so i know that the your you know your careers spanned so many different awesome segments but if you had to kind of really give a shout out i suppose to the people that mm. really helped all of those real great landmarks who would you give these flowers to Easy, easy. So I'm, I'm going to try to go chronologically because that's probably the easiest way for me to right, wrap right, it right. without. Yes. without. Um, Moon um, is, is a guy who was, I looked, I met him in Houston when I was young. I was 15, 16 years old. I'd never really went out of the bedroom. Like, so this is the first person that I was like, hey, I like to dance. And everyone, I think at that studio was like, this guy's weird, right? Because there's nothing I did that made any sense. It was just a kid who had been dancing in his room. Hmm. I showed up at the studio and he looked at me and he was like, do you want to join our little group? There's only three guys in the four guys in the group. And including it was a little you, popping. Including you. No, 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 just four. And then right, he was right, like, right. do you want to join our group? Him saying that more, and I think I've, I've voiced this, he ended up being a close friend all the way up till now. Like since that day, he's been a close friend of mine and he was on IME crew and uh, right, right. he ended up being, but, but he was the first person who looked at the weird crap I was doing and was like, you know what? I actually think there's something here. I don't know whether I would have had the courage to go out there and on a limb that many times and being shut down if it wasn't for him, you know? Mm, yeah. So I would say, I would say I'd give it to him and, and a lot of the other members of that crew too all inspire me, which is the Mr. Green and, and Sifu. So those, those three in particular were just people who believed in me before I was literally capable of anything impressive. Right. Um, <laughs> right. So, so, so them, them first, I would say, uh, one of the biggest ones, and this is kind of going out of order, but I just have to say it is Archie Ninja. I mentioned him once, but he's mm. been to this day, kind of the dance father for me. Mm. And it's funny because I probably have only had about, I, I lived in New York with him for a couple days at a time on multiple occasions. I also mm. met him in Czech Republic. Same thing. I was in Czech Republic. I was young. I was one of the youngest people there. Mm -hmm. everyone had every reason to to call me a not a real dancer because i was doing weird things mm -hmm. kind of the same way people treat tiktok dancers today yeah 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 um and and he came up to me i remember we were just in, in like a jacuzzi or something and he was teaching me uh the foundations of voguing and whacking in there and there was he was the first person to allow me to want to learn what they do and actually take me seriously and um it's just the same same exact thing. Somebody who was willing to look at me as a human being, not as uh, someone who's destroying a culture by trying to change it, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and his love brought me into his world. And I got to actually experience all the beautiful parts of that generation. I and mean, he's older now. I think he's 60-something uh, now. And one of the most powerful spirits in the world I, I, to, to this day i don't know a lot of humans that like, promote that sort of joy and everyone around them yeah, yeah um so so it was important it was super important and i think that's also why I, I i constantly feel like i want to be that for somebody else too because no matter how much we feel like we're losing things as we get older and it might just be a natural i guess byproduct of getting older i mean just life goes on it without you in, in, in a lot of ways um, I think it's important to recognize that a lot of these kids are not trying to be disrespectful or ruin the culture. Right. They genuinely probably want to know about it, but there's nobody around there to give them the time of day. 
Right. Um, so, so he was that person for me, and it, it really helped me um, fall in love with the with the culture. If you more. had to give um, one more, one more, just because of a short one, time, so one, yes. more, one more person. Oh man, one more! I am going to give, and it's dance related only, right? Yep. Oh, mm, okay. No, no. If it, it can even be someone personal in your life, it can be. Your okay, mind. okay. Then honestly, I will give it to. Man, my brain right now. I, I think because there's endless people I've w watched and inspired me in small ways, I don't think it, it'd be fair to give any one of them a flower, but I will right. give my father a flower. And I feel like it's interesting because I, 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 I mentioned my mom earlier, and she's obviously like a heavy caretaker, but I have to give my dad. He literally worked every single day. And I think this is a story that tons of people understand, but he never slept while I... While I was in the house, I never saw him sleep. Um, he would come home after I went to bed. He would leave before I could get up. He was hustling so that I could play around in my room and do this. Right. And if I think about it, there's literally no greater foundation of why I exist in the life that I have now is because he wasn't home. He wasn't home. And, mm. and I think some people think of that as like a negative trait. But I mean, this guy was making it so that I could have a computer that could find videos you know, and, yeah. I, and I think about yeah. those things that are like, there's no bigger foundation. I mean, nobody's inspired me <laughs> to the level that that made a difference in my life. Yeah. Um, so I just want to give proper respect. And I, and I always do. But I think if I just publicly, I'd like to say, oh, yeah, yeah. He, he deserves all the respect for making everything good that is, exists in my life, basically. Big up your pups, man. Big up yeah. your pups. Listen, bro, thank you so much for taking part in this whole segment. I couldn't imagine doing it without you. As soon as we were brought to this whole thing was brought to the table, I was like, I gotta have him, man. I gotta have him on. I'm so glad it worked. I'm so glad it worked. You, thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. I know you're gonna go off and do some awesome TV idea stuff. But um yeah, we'll catch up for sure. Sounds great, Jade. All thank right. you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.